Them Damn Mexicans presents TDM Talk. Hey, what's up, everybody, man? Thank you guys for tuning in to another edition of TDM Talk. I'm your host, David, of Them Damn Mexicans. Make sure you guys continue to like, comment, share, and subscribe, as you guys have been doing. We appreciate all the love and support. Uh, shout out to our viewers and our listeners in the UK and in Canada, man. Uh, merci beaucoup to my followers in Canada, man. Thank you guys so much for that. Uh, keep tapping in. We'll see some of you guys later on this year for Embrace the Culture. Uh, shout out to our sponsors. We still don't have any drinks. We couldn't get the timing down. But uh, my boy Javi over at Barrio Land and Latinx Hip Hop, man. Shout out to my boy um, waiting on those clips as well, sirs. So let's get on it. Today we have a very special guest in the building. We have my boy Andrew or Andrew Music on Instagram. What's going on, my brother? How you What's doing? What's going on, bro? What's going on, man? Man, chilling, man, chilling. Just trying to get you know get it back cracking. It's been probably about a week um, since we've been in the studio. Right. Uh, my daughter, it was my daughter's quince this past weekend, so I literally just took last week off oh, from no recording shit. because it was just like so much going on. But you know, how's yeah, it going, man? Man, everything's going good, bro. Going good. Yeah, um, man. Shout out to Roly, man. You know, Roly oh, made the connection. Um, how did you guys, how, how are you guys connected? Man, I've been knowing Roly since I was probably about 17, 18 years old, bro. Oh, for real? Yeah, so, yeah, I've been knowing Roly for that long. I'm sorry. Nah, I'm kidding. <laughs> nah, man, hell not Roly. Nah, sorry. Roly, good people, man. Yeah, so I've been knowing him, knowing him for a pretty good minute. What's the relationship, like, is, is, business-wise? Is there, is there, like, is he is he managing? Oh, somewhat? yeah, he manages me, yeah, okay. promotes me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we uh, we talk about the promotion. I know you do um, is it country music. Is country that what you would call it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's cool, man. I think you're probably our first country. Uh, have we had anybody do country music? No, we haven't, man. So you're the first. That's dope. You know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So okay. what? How did how did how did you start doing? Because you know, yeah. ain't too many of us doing you know doing country music, especially if you're from Houston. You know, so not nah, for sure. So, man, I started doing country music about a year ago, bro. And um, to be honest, it was a bucket list for me, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> it was a bucket list, and um, I did my first country song. The first um, app I put it on was um, Facebook. So it kind of took off from there a little bit. I got a little recognition there. And then, um, then I jumped on TikTok with it, and then I dropped a couple songs, dropped another song, and that one song, Brown Eyes and Moonshine, took off and that's how I went kind of that song trended through TikTok. Okay. So that's how I got, gained my fan base. There's actually another Hispanic country singer that's really big right now, which is Louis the singer. Yeah. And um he actually uh, got in contact with me through TikTok. Oh for real? Because of my fans, you know? Yeah. So I he came to Houston, did a show and he asked me to open up for him and shit, Oh that's, that's live right there. Yeah, that's how I went on. Yeah, um, I don't, I don't know him, but we we've talked several times. Uh, not Louis, but his manager, uh, uh, Smooth, Smooth Vega. Vega. Yes, yeah. you know, shout out to Smooth and everything they're doing over there with with what he's got going on with Louis. Like that, it's just like you know a constant, um, you know, elevation. Like it's you know now he's signed, I think, to the um, UMG, the country, yeah. Nashville or whatever. Uh, so that's dope, man. Uh, so how, what was that experience like, man? What was the crowd like? How how many people were in the building there for that? Man, it was around probably about five to six hundred people. Yeah, in there and like shit. I'm you know I started out in Houston, so I brought up you know my fans came out. Yeah, you know it was live, man. To be honest, it was my first show. It was just lit, bro. Like, was where was it at? At Warehouse Live. Okay, okay. That was so. That was not that long ago, right? That was in August. August yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I, I remember that show. Because I think I had. Um, that's how I got um, with J Vaz doing the J Vaz show. That's right. That. That's right. He did tell me he went up there. Um, that's how I did that. My first interview was with Jay Vaz. Y'all did it here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, so you're familiar with with here? Yeah. No, okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if y'all had met, so when I introduced y'all, I was like, okay, I didn't know if y'all had already nah, met yeah, or not. He was okay. The first guy that I ever did an interview with. Okay. Okay. That's what's up, yeah. man. Nah, J Vaz. Shout out to J Vaz. Yeah. Shout out to the J Vaz show and Texas Underground and all that good stuff, man. La Conecta, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. So, um, so that was so that was your first show in August. How many yep. shows have you done since then? Man, probably like four. Four. Yeah. 
right. We got another one coming up in Texarkana, Arkansas, June 15th oh, wow. or June 16th. And then another one in Washington on May. Washington State or Washington like D.C.? State. Okay, so in that Pacific Northwest area. Yeah. That's what's up. We I, I know Crazy. it's a couple <laughs> artists that, yeah, it's a couple artists that I know from, well, I've never met them personally, but we they do like reggaeton music and, and we didn't chopped it up. We have a big um, event in September, Embrace the Culture. It's our fifth one. It's like our annual thing. Um, okay. Shoot, if you're in town, man, you want to come perform, you know. Office is so heavy. Do it right there, right there in the hood on Sp Spindle Tap. You know where yeah. Spindle Tap Brewery is? Yeah. Right there on Hirsch, yeah. I'll be live. I'll be down. Yeah, we were, uh, Rolly and them came out last year um, to see the people perform. We This year, we got people from Canada, Cali, and, and oh, that's live, yeah. all kind of, you know, the Han artist, uh, uh, hip-hop, you name it, we're going to have it. So, it, I, man, it would be great to have you there. Oh, man, I'll be honored, bro. Oh, we got this on camera. Uh, you know, it's a verbal uh, commitment. No, just mess <laughs> with you, man. So, did you ever rap before, bro, or anything? Yeah. Did you try the the, the rap hip hop thing at man, first? Rap was my first thing, man. See how I came about rap. Like, I love poetry, right? Okay. So, rhyming words and and then I don't know, man. I'm from Memphis. I was born in Memphis, Tennessee. So, rapping was, you know, a big thing out there for everybody. Everybody wanted to be a rapper. Yeah. You know, I can remember being in school, being on the table with a pencil, rapping and rhyming. Beating on the table and making Beating on the table, you know. And then, um, yeah, bro, I did that for for a minute with Roly and Slow Life. Shout out to Slow Life. Yeah, shout out to Slow Life. And, um, yeah, man, I was rapping for a minute, and then I just stopped doing music for, like, some years. Why like I said, that? I didn't just I, – I was rapping. I was probably about 19, 20 when I stopped. So it was like four or five years. I ain't stopped doing music until a year ago. What made you stop though? Man, bro. <laughs> my um my baby mom's, you know, she was pregnant. At the time I was like seventeen years old too, right? Yeah. So I wasn't making enough income, bro. I was working at McDonald's, but at the same time I'm trying to put all this money into music. And it's just like, bro, fuck this, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, start trying to be learn how to be a dad, you know, like, yeah. you know, I got to provide, and some got come. And so by the time I turned 18, I went to refineries, and then I started working at refineries ever since then. That I, I'm glad you said that, man, because that's some real, like, grown man shit there, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, to say, to put something you love kind of to the side because you're like, no, nah, I got to be there for my kid, you know. Yeah. And, and um, we just had uh, Tillo not too long ago, and we talked about, Know, shouting out the dads who's their president in their kids' life and, you know, being parents instead of, you know, you got some parents, they want to live their life and do their thing, but yeah. you got small kids at home. Now, if they're grown, hey, right. by all means, And that's do crazy, you. man, because, I, I, like, being in Memphis, man, I grew up in a community like that where I knew I know a lot of deadbeat dads, you know what I'm saying? Damn. I mean, some of them are messed up and everything. <laughs> and I'm like, man, and I was like, nah. Come You're like, you me. weren't going to be like that. Come be me. I left Memphis, moved to Texas, and then, but, like, just that environment is just fucked up, bro. How long were you in Memphis before you before you so came here? So I was there? born over there. I was born and raised. I left Memphis when I was probably about 17, 16. Okay. Something like that, yeah. I'm 26 right now, right? Okay. So, but, yeah. Are hey, you still young, man? <laughs> you <feel> older here. <laughs> Nah, I don't feel that way, man. Cause when you get to my age, what you gonna really feel, you know? Nah, you ain't lying, bro. Ain't lying. So what was it like growing up in Memphis, though, man? Like, I mean, that's country home, though. I mean, well, not Memphis, but uh, Nashville. It's definitely but... southern, more, you know. Like, but man, man, it's a tough environment, you know. It's, like I grew up in like you know the hood parts of Memphis, so it was just it's a different lifestyle than when I moved to Texas, you know. Yeah. But shit, be like that, you know, you move to a different environment, different people. It's just a whole different energy and vibe and I, I love it over here in Texas. You say you love it? I love it here in Texas. Yeah. That's good though, man. I mean, well, I, of course I'd be biased saying I love it cuz I I've only lived in Texas or well, Houston specifically, but cuz Texas is a different from what people tell me, people's like Texas is a different beast you know than anywhere else it's, and this is coming from people because yeah. i know people from new york from all over that have moved down here and they'll tell me they're like yeah you know we just love it down here you know a lot of people are moving down here from cali nah, from yeah, everywhere yeah, texas <laughs> yeah 
But yeah, like it's just a different environment, man. It's like every time I go to Memphis, bro, I get locked up. <laughs> just, you get locked up. Yeah. Oh damn! So the environment is just like the people. But you know, I'm like, man, it's just it's crazy. Bro. Wait, what you mean? You get locked up? Like for what? what man, just I don't know. I got like bad juju in Memphis, yeah. or like bad like luck the people over there, you bro. be with or something. Or? Nah, not even. I could like I think the last time I got locked up for a DU, DWI, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying, I, bro? I never even been like. I never drink and drive. Yeah, yeah. But it's when like, you go to Memphis, it's, it's bad juju, bro. It's bad luck. I don't know. It's just crazy. Who are some of your influences uh, growing up music-wise, like from Memphis, specifically? Like being from there, because like there's Dolph. a rich history of like hip-hop over there, you know, like, rap. and Yeah, like Dolph. Young Dolph. See, I keep forgetting how old you are because, yeah. like, when I think Memphis, I think A Ball, Mafia, MJG, yeah. Three Six Mafia. Yeah, like, that's Mafia. how far. Man, uh, I never listened to him when I was never. I mean, really? my pops did. Yeah, yeah. I didn't care for it, you know. Yeah. I didn't care for Three Six Mafia or like. And it's, I just think it wasn't my vibe. I just they got some good songs, you know what I'm saying? But well, I'm gonna tell you what's crazy. I was but, younger too, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I was, I was young. I was young. I'm gonna tell you the crazy thing about like DJ Paul and Juicy J. Like their music is still sampled to this day. Oh, like, no, like yeah. it's there. If I'm not mistaken, I read somewhere where they're like one of the most sampled uh, groups or or whatever. Yeah, groups of all time. Even the the Kendrick Lamar, uh, the and Future song where they where he dissed Drake and J Cole. Yeah, that was an old Three Six Mafia song. You yeah, know? yeah. I mean, yeah. you could take it you back. You hear the samples. Ronnie O and Cooley yeah. J, they were the uh, originators, but a lot of people know it from the Three Six Mafia. Like sam- yeah, it's, yeah, it'd be simple. I mean, I, I used to, you know, I heard the music. I know, you know, I just never was like oh, the new Three Six Mafia albums out. Yeah, know, yeah. Whatever. Nah, you know, I hear I you, know. man. So, when, so talking about the music that you do, I know it's country music, but what would you describe it more as? Like if someone's never heard your music and, and you wanted to introduce your music to someone, what would you say it was like? Andrew's music, you know, like the genre. I got a lot of people that debate on it. You know okay. what I'm saying? What What about if specifically? It's, some people say it's not country. Some people say it is country. Some people, I don't has I don't read a comment with someone like man, this is like Bone Thugs and Country mix. I'm like, what? you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I don't argue with them. I'll make a post. Like man, look, I don't. I really don't care what. I don't need a genre on my shit, you know? Yeah. Shit, I really, I, you know, I don't need a genre. Speaking of debates and, like, country music, what about Beyonce, the Beyonce thing? Is, nah, it, I don't, is that, that country or is not country? Because that's oh, what I see cute. online all day is, you know, don't get the beehive after you now. Yeah. I don't like that song. You don't like it? No. Nah. But I have mean, you heard it? it sounds country. Yeah. She did a good job sounding country. But is it country? Maybe. It's her country, I guess. It's her country. It's her country. Guess, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, you know what I'm saying? Thing. Like, shit, it's my country. It's my own genre, my own. I stay in my own lane, bro. Like, people will hear my music, bro, and I promise they'll be like, I never heard nothing like it. Yeah. Some people say, man, I never listened to country, but I'll jam the shit out of your shit. Yeah, and yeah. And so, I mean, I w- that's why I always say, like, I mean, man, really in the industry of country, bro, it's a competition with and it's oh, changed like, so much too, though. Yeah, it's a competition, bro. And like, you might think like, I don't know, it's competition. So, but I always try to stay in my own lane, right? Like with the music wise or whatever, I'm in my own lane. I ain't, like I said, my own genre, my own music. I'm not competing with nobody. Yeah, correct, correct. It's a competition for real. Yeah, it's crazy, bro. Um, that's that's. You should always want to be in competition with yourself, and because yeah, when, when you start it. to look at others, you get distracted of what you're yeah. doing because you're too busy trying to keep up with the next yeah, person. Yeah, trying to keep up with them. You're man. like, nah, man, I'm just gonna do me, and and, and that ain't even about like doing that. No. You ain't really got the love for the music, then. Yeah, you're trying to compete. So, so, so you're basically saying you the music you do, you do it because that's what you love to do. Yeah, yeah, and it's a vibe, and other people like it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So. I, I win. Does Slow Life do any of your tracks? Slow Life does all my stuff. All of your stuff. Okay. I didn't even know he had that in his arsenal, man. Nah, he's Tal- dope he's with talented, it. yeah. Yeah, he's dope with it. Shout nah, out to Slow Life. Nah, shout out to Slow Life, man. Musica de Vida. I told him one time, <laughs> I love that shit. When he's in you know, Spanish, you know, yeah. you know, being them damn Mexicans. Uh, um, 
representation for the lat you know for for us in general i mean i can say latinos but i mean you got puerto ricans dominicans they're all doing their thing but when it comes to the mexicans it's just like okay who who's really you yeah, know, out here doing yeah. it um you know so any music in spanish nah, any lyric man. no no nah. all english yeah i wonder what that would be like me like spanish country like does that even exist I think Louis the Singer got one, as a matter of fact. In Spanish? Yeah, Spanish and English. Know, does he? Yeah. yeah. And I was like the biggest fan. <laughs> He'll fight anybody over him, too. No. <laughs> um, is there maybe a collab in the works with, with him, man? Any talks of, of maybe you guys, you two nah, doing something? No? No. Would you want to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can be honest. Man, you know what, man? Louis is a badass artist, man, right? Louis is fucking dope. But man, to be honest, the way I feel about features, man, I don't want to do a feature like it. I don't really like features, bro. To be honest, and I got a few features, right? And um, and I, if I like your sound, I'm gonna do it. I like, I love Louis sound. I was, I was a fan. You know, I'm a fan of Louis, right? Yeah. I like, I listen to his music. I, you know, he kicked those down for Hispanic country artists, bro. Facts. To be honest, you know, and I will, you know, I salute him on that for sure. But man, I just don't hear it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when you say you have features, who who are some of the people you worked with? Man, so I met a cat on TikTok, bro. He was from Alabama. And um, I heard his song. His name is Shad Cole. Shout out to Shad Cole. Um, I heard his song and I was like, bro, I like your sound. I like, you know, I like what I hear. And I was working on a song called Country Songs at the time. And I was like, I want a feature for this song, but I wanna, I want the right, right person for it. And um, man, I reached out to him and he hit me back up ASAP and was like, "Yeah, bro, send me the track, let's do it." So I was like, "Bet." And man, like in a week later, I got that song back. And we posted it. And it was, so shout out to Shaw Cole on that one, and then the other feature I got is with my little sister. You know. Okay. And yeah, my little sister Steph. Shout out to Stephanie. Yeah, she did. Uh, that was her first time recording a song, and she's got a beautiful voice, bro. Was she singing? She was singing, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we got a song called Rolling out on our platform. So those are the only two features. Those are the only two features I got. Hey, you really don't rock with them features like that, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Is there anybody that, may, if the opportunity presented itself, that you would want to work with that you haven't? Man, like underground a or famous? Anywhere, anybody. Man, Luke Combs. Ryan Up Church, um, Florida Georgia Line. Oh yeah. Um, Kid G. Maybe Morgan Wallen. Maybe Morgan. Because I'm like, in that same like I could hear me and Morgan on a song. Yeah. So again, growing up, I was never really in the country. I knew all the the Brooks and Dunn and and George Strait things like that. You know, older older music. You know. Uh -huh. um, but it wasn't until I, um, I think somebody, one of my coworkers um, put me on to some country music, you know. She was jamming some one day, and I said, man, what is that you jamming, you know? And she, yeah, it's so-and-so. She sent me, like, her playlist on Apple Music, right? <laughs> Sends it to me. I was like, man, some of this stuff is dope. It's not your tra your traditional uh, style of country, you know. So yeah. that, I thought that was so dope. Like, I like Kane Brown was another one that I like, you know. Um, yeah. Alan Jackson was... You're yeah, like Alan Jackson's a beast too, bro. Yeah, even Toby Keith, you know, uh, Keith, with his racist ass. ass. <laughs> with his <Keith>. racist ass. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but yeah, man, that's those the OGs. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, we had Roly in here at the beginning of the, this year. Actually, we did a, a a whole where it was it was myself, J Vaz, um, Roly. Jedediah and uh, my boy Flock from uh, uh, Pouring Up Talking Shit. And I remember we talked about kind of mixing genres. like like, And then I think Roly brought up the Willie Nelson Snoop Dogg <laughs> song, right? He's like, you know, they did that song. Pardon me. They did that song together, and that shit was jamming. They got like Morgan Wallen and Lil Durk. They did a song together. I too. just heard that Rob the other day. I was tripping out on that. I didn't even know that existed. Yeah, I didn't really like the song, bro. Yeah. But I mean, they made it work and yeah. it went on like billboards, bro. So Aye. I mean, but it's badass to see like rappers trying to get in. 
And that's what's kind of happening. Like, like I'm saying in a lot, bro, like where other artists are trying to do country now. And I'm like, it's cool. Yeah. I love to say that. No, nah, I, I think if it works, because one of the things I brought up in that, you know, during that interview was like, don't do the song for the sake of just crossing over. Cause it comes off as corny and it comes off as like you're trying too hard you yeah. know now if it comes in and it's an organic kind of like oh shit we we both rock with the joint you know it's it's a it's a good little mashup cool i think kane brown got a song with like sway lee and uh, um i want to say it's somebody else on it too that um i don't know where it was at but i know i have it in my phone somewhere but anyway i was like yeah i mean those kind of collab you know what i mean yeah one thing I tell artists is like, look, you're not gonna be everybody's cup of tea. No, nah, hell no. Like you got Drake, Bad Bunny, two of the biggest artists. Not everybody likes them though. Yeah. So I like when you say you do this shit for the love of it. Like, hey, if you rock with it, you just rock with it. If you don't, hey, it is just what it is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, like I said, yeah, exactly. And if I can get paid and make a living off of it, shit, that's even better. Yeah. I mean, I think that's what a lot of us strive to do is just kind of like. Find something we love to get paid for, and then it doesn't really become work. For sure. You know, um, I know with the podcast thing, like, I love doing this. Like, you know, if, if it would just help me take care of the bills, you know, it'd be cool. I think we're getting to to that point where it's almost it's almost there. Yeah, yeah, new thing, yeah. But it's about being consistent with it. No, for sure, yeah. Shit don't happen overnight. No, nah, it doesn't, you know, because we – and we've only been doing this uh, – we did a year and what month are we in? Where are we in April? Yeah, a year and four months, almost five. It's almost a year and a half, you know, right. rounding up. And but we've been as about as consistent as possible as we could. Uh, and we we just dropped the Tillo episode. That was our seventy fifth episode. So we're nearing a hundred episodes. And we already have a couple others that we've done and we haven't released yet. But Again, it's just about the consistency thing, bro. Like, right. you you know, and I always tell artists all the time, like, bro, you can't be hot for a couple of months and then just take a break. Yeah. And then you just, like, because people forget about you, man. Real shit, yeah. You know, and I'm sure, like, after you did the, the, the rap thing and you just stopped doing it, I'm sure people just forgot you even did music. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, you're pretty much right. Yeah, you're pretty much right, yeah. But even when I was doing rap, I didn't have a recognition or fan base neither, you know. So You were just doing it to kind of do it? That was, that was just fun. I was just like, I like rapping. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was just fun. Did you do any mix of the, the, the hip-hop and the the rap in the country? Bro, people, that's what I'm saying. People would debate on it on my I'm saying it's like a bump thugs. You would get people that say, man, okay, this is like rap country or okay, this is pop country. I got country songs. I got like, Songs that sound real, real country, and then I got songs that are like, okay, this like some summer jam vibe shit. Yeah, yeah. Like Brown Eyes and Moonshine took off. My type of girl. It's like, you know, people were like, bro, that shit vibes. That's dope. That's dope, man. So what's next for you, man? Man, shit. Um, we just keep going. Like I said, we got those shows coming up in Texarkana and and then in Washington, but I mean, other than that, yeah. When is the one in Washington? It's called <laughs> The um thing is called the event's called MAGA. It's by a uh, dude uh my homeboy Rec Outlaw. He's um he's hosting that event and it's gonna be a pretty big one. Too. But when is well, when is that? May uh May eighteenth. Okay, so that one's first, and then because you said I think you had one in June. You said mm -hmm. okay, okay. As far as any new music, EPs, uh, albums. Yeah, man, we got a bunch of new music. I ain't released yet, but. Got some shit coming out. We're gonna start working on an album. Uh, in two weeks, we're gonna start working on the album. Okay, okay. When you looking? For, when you looking to drop that? Man, I can't even tell you, bro. Okay. Couldn't even tell you to be honest, but it's gonna be real soon. Okay. Now we're looking forward to it, man. We'll be looking forward to it, and and um, yeah, just I mean, I I don't. I'm trying to think of like if there's anything I'm missing or if there's anything that you wanted to kind of uh, mention or bring out, bring up that we haven't really touched on yet, pause. Man, no, I don't. Thank <laughs> you. Well, man, uh, before we get out of here, bro, any last minute shout outs? Man, shout out to Slow Life, shout out to Roly, shout out to them damn Mexicans, J-Vaz, 
Shout out to my boy Rick Outlaw. Yeah. Yeah. Man, shout out to everybody, man. Uh, appreciate uh, you stopping by, man. Oh, man I appreciate you for having me, bro. Yeah, just uh, giving us, a, you know, a small uh, amount, of, amount of your time, bro, just yeah, to sit here and talk about it. Man, we'll put a link in the description where you guys can go follow him on Instagram. Uh, do you have a YouTube website or anything? Yeah, YouTube, YouTube TikTok. Andrew Music. TikTok, Andrew Music Official. Instagram, Andrew Music. So. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll put all the links in the description because I know y'all are lazy. So we we'll just <laughs> go in the description, click the link, and you know make sure y'all go follow him just to see what's next. And you know, hey, maybe you know, uh, well, he already agreed to it, so he's gonna do <laughs> see him at Embrace the Culture September yeah, 5th, September fifteenth. Damn, I can't remember fourteenth or fifteenth. Damn, I don't remember. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, one of those days, Mexican Independence weekend for sure. We're gonna turn up at Spindle Tap Brewery. Y'all gonna see a lot of artists from all over. Um, we're expecting a huge crowd uh, this year for the five year anniversary. So, man, again, thank you guys for tuning in to another edition. Shout out to our sponsors, our viewers in the UK and Canada. And on that note, we are them damn Mexicans.